Hello everyone, how are you? I hope you are fine. Today we're going to talk about uh, marketplace analysis and how can it help you to actually enter into the online space. So, before we begin, let's talk about how marketplace analysis plays a vital role into your online venture. The reason behind it is as simple as it is, it is like your feasibility analysis. Because why? You have to evaluate first whether your product or your services can help the customer problems and needs. So, what is marketplace analysis? When you talk about marketplace analysis, it's about whether you are to evaluate the businesses that you are going to do online. The reason behind it is because certain factors may come to play for your online startup and it can affect you, the business venture, in the long run. Because why? If, for example, without a proper evaluation, you might end up spending more resources than you need in order for you to put your business online. And therefore, it can be very detrimental to your business. That is why an online mapping tool is very important. The reason why an online mapping tool is very important is because it shows you the journey that your customer take in order to find you online. And from that journey, you can utilize the intermediaries behind it, such as Google, Yahoo, Reddit and so on. And from that utilization, you actually, like, you actually minimize the resources that you use by exploiting whatever the capacity that the search engines and so on provides. Such a tool that you can use is actually Google Trends. And why is Google Trends is such an important thing in a marketplace analysis? The reason why Google Trends is such an important thing is because it can help your venture to see what people are interested over time. And the data that is lies there can actually help you to see whether the services that you're providing or the product that you're providing is actually beneficial to your consumer or customer. This will help in the long run for you to understand what kind of searches is actually important for people. And from there, you can actually use it to advertise a part of a revenue model that you can use like AdWords, AdSense. And from that, you can actually promote your product or services better. You talk about customers. What types of customers are you looking at? There are usually two types of customers that you will usually find in the online space, which is first B2B, business to consumer, and then B2B, business to business. You have to remember that these types of customers differ in terms of how they purchase and how their characteristics are. For example, the complexity of buying of a B2C is easier because why it's usually an individual trying to purchase a product or service. But when you talk about B2B, it's much more complex. The, the specification, the things that they want and so on. When you talk about even channels, B2B is much more complex. There's distributor, there's actually wholesaler, there's retailer along the way. But when you talk about customer, it's direct to customer. Or is it your customer from your retailer, your customer from your distributor, or your customer from your wholesaler? Even your purchasing characteristics is even peculiar. For example, a B2B customer is mostly focused more on similar volumes. This is because they have a supply chain to maintain and a certain customer base to do. So for example, when you look at Alibaba, Alibaba always focuses on buying things in bulk. And this is why because it's a business to business model. When you, when you look at cost, uh, customer or consumer, more likely, is that they focus more on buying low volume products but it can be high, it follows on the type of season. For example, Amazon. During Christmas or Black Friday, the increase of sales for consumer is higher during those times. This is the things that you have to remember in terms of scaling, infrastructure, resources, and things you want to actually invest in. And it's even important for you because why? Knowing your customer will help you to identify the needs and wants of product and services and the ability for you to actually scale. That's why it's important for you, an online merchant, to determine which approach will you take. Is your product actually going to be on Lazada? It's because Lazada is actually a consignment space. So it means that they give you the opportunity to have a platform to sell your products online. Or should you go directly to your customer? Because why Lazada as it is, eBay or Muda.my is just a intermediary. And sometimes when you grow bigger, should you actually remove intermediaries at all and set up your own online store? Those are the questions you have to do with a marketplace analysis. Those are the things you have to remember, whether you have the capacity, the capabilities, the expertise. Because this is very important. Because why? If, for example, you do not evaluate all these things early on, you will waste all your resources on things that you can't actually cater to. 
not only that, there are certain things you have to remember. Like for example, the journey that the customer wants in terms of the product offering. For example, there are three types of journey. An offline journey, a mixed mode journey, and an online journey. An online journey is when the customer actually finds your product directly online. There is no other method but to buy it online. When we talk about offline journey, it's more of a saying that they find it through ads, pamphlets, and so on. And when it comes to mixed mode journey, it can start from your parents or from your friends. They give a word of mouth and then from there, the, the customer actually search for you and find you online. And from this consumer channel mapping, which is the offline, online and mixed mode journey, you will understand where is your customer base is. If for example, you're selling bread, would it be possible for you to do it online? Yes, maybe, if you can find a good method. But most likely, your consumer customer is more likely focused offline. So your pamphlet or your offerings are more offline and your sites are more focused on a brochureware website. So by knowing all this marketplace analysis and doing all this feasibility analysis in terms of your services and offering, you can give the best possible solution for your customer. Moving on, another tool that you can use actually for your marketplace analysis or your startup online venture is actually a business model canvas. The reason why a business model canvas is such a good thing to use is because it can help you to identify all the key things that you are required to run in your online venture. The, th the key things that you can actually see is actually like your value proposition, your key partners, your key activities, your key resources, your channels, your customer segmentation, and also your cost and revenue stream. And for you to read more or listen more or watch more regarding a business model canvas, you can press on this link. Finally, when all things are good, what do you need to do? You need to know what is the revenue stream that your online business venture will do. Definitely your product. If it's good enough, it can sell. But there are other methods for you to actually gain more revenues. And those revenues are such as, finally, after knowing all that, all the marketplace analysis you also need to analyze the revenue model stream that you are going to use for your online venture remember even though you're selling a product doesn't mean that you can not find other revenue streams for your own venture such model that you can use is actually like the subscription based model it means that you have a paywall beyond your website or blog for example this works best if you are actually a publishing company like Forbes um, Harvard Review and so on by having a subscription-based model, members can actually subscribe to your publishing site to see your content or you can actually get that for free but with ads. Another revenue model that you can consider is actually pay-per-view in which the customer can actually just access one part of the content that you actually have as a publishing site. Pay-per-view is good in the sense that you give an option to the customer who does not want everything that is there in your website. Therefore, you give options in a way that they can save money and still access to the content that they need. This is actually very uh, helpful, especially in the academic world. As you can see, online journal works that way. It doesn't need to you actually to subscribe to the whole journal if you only need just one article. Moving on, another model of revenue stream that you can actually implement is actually to do a sponsorship. You can either ask people to sponsor your product by putting in their videos and so on, or you can actually have a section that you will allow sponsors to put their advertisement there. In a way, it can create a revenue model in terms of sales. Or it can also be a revenue model in terms of clicks per minute. Last but not least, you can actually put a well-placed advertisement on your website that is not obtrusive to your customer. And every time your customer clicks on those advertisements, they it can actually generate income for you. So as you can see, when you talk about Online commerce, it does not just mean that you have to sell products only. There are many other ways to generate revenue in a way that it can help you to maintain your or sustain your e-commerce in the long run. That marks the end of our topic today. Therefore, from this, you can actually see how marketplace analysis plays an important role in your the online business venture. Therefore, I suggest that you read on uh, through the slides that I have given you and at the same time, watch the video on the feasibility analysis. It can help you furthermore in understanding how to look whether your business is feasible enough to make sense to your customer. Thank you very much and I hope you have a good day. Goodbye.